guys, I'm in a totally different location today. I'm actually in my sort of entryway of my apartment. Um, there's like a really big echo in my apartment because, I mean, it sounds like it's empty, but it's not. It's just because the walls are concrete and it's like a really big one huge room kind of when you get in. Well, I mean, it's fairly big. So um, that's why there's like this really strange echo my parents were here and that was fun. Um, my dad has actually never visited me here in my apartment in Switzerland because my parents actually live in Vancouver in Canada and um, you know they still have their house there and everything, our family's there, my sister is over there. Um, I'm like the only one that's left here in Europe. My dad, he will, will always wanted to eat goose because my mom doesn't really want to make like she doesn't really know how to make it or she just doesn't like to make it so we cooked this like gigantic goose that was like five and a half kilograms I invited um, my boyfriend's parents as well so there were six of us and it was like this huge goose and I'd never made it before so I went online to like find a good recipe and I actually ended up um, putting it in the oven for like eight hours or something because you just put it on like a really low temperature and it just roasts it like really really slowly but it just, um, yeah, it just tasted amazing. I've never had it. There's so much fat that comes out of it, though. Um, so you have to like drain, keep draining off the fat. It's like crazy how much fat is in a goose, but that's just how it is. Next weekend, I'm going to Munich, obviously, for my. I'm doing like a makeup seminar. I don't know how many of you are aware of that, just because the videos don't have been in German for that, um, but I'm doing a makeup seminar, like my first ever makeup seminar in Germany, because I do have quite a few viewers in Germany, or in other like German speaking countries. So yeah, I'm doing a seminar there in Munich, and um, really excited about that, because like Munich is in the southern part of Germany, which is called Bavaria, and Bavaria is actually where I was from, like, because I was born in Germany. Um, you know, before we moved to Canada, we lived in Bavaria. So, I don't know, it's gonna be kinda of cool to see that part of Germany again, because in recent trips to Germany, I've gone sort of more like to the northern part. So I'm really excited about that. I think it's gonna be fun. I'm a little bit nervous, but I think it's gonna be cool. And I'm actually really excited for the summer too, because um, my boyfriend and I have just been working so much. Like, we've just been working and working and working because we are saving up money to buy like a house or an apartment or something um, because it's that like buying something that is like really 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 expensive here in Switzerland I mean the like just the housing prices are incredibly high in all of Europe but especially here in Switzerland so we've just been working a lot and just trying to save up as much money as we can so that we can eventually buy a house or something um, so yeah, I just feel like I've been working a lot lately and just really, um, just really working a lot. And so we are kind of planning this year to have, like, to go on two vacations. We are going, I think in the summer we're actually going to Berlin to visit um, friends of ours. And they live there and have, like, a place. So that's going to be cool because Berlin is, like, a really fast-paced um, European city, there's a ton of cool nightclubs and really cool restaurants and bars and like a lot of sort of cultural aspects and you know I am into, I really love going clubbing but here in Switzerland I don't do it as much just because I don't find that the music scene is as vibrant. I mean there, there are obviously good clubs and stuff here but it's nothing compared to like Berlin and Berlin is really famous for its nightlife so I mean we're my boyfriend and I are still young we don't have kids and stuff and we're just gonna go there and have like the time of our lives go partying and doing all that stuff and you know just staying with our friends which is gonna be cool and then I think in the fall we're planning to go on sort of like a more sort of like relaxation holiday because I think Berlin is more gonna be just about like going out and shopping and doing stuff like that and I definitely need some kind of like a time, like when I go on holiday, I really want to go somewhere that's just like, okay, time to shut off, you know, you can really relax. And I like kind of including a little bit of relaxation and stuff with also doing like cultural things. So I think we might be going to Sardinia, which is um, an Italian city or like, or city. <laughs> it's, an, it's an Italian island in the Mediterranean Sea. 
and it's supposed to be like gorgeous, like really, really nice blue crystal water, beautiful beaches and stuff, and just kind of relaxation, but I just, I love Italy, I love the culture, I love the food. Oh my god, the food is like one of the best things about Italy. So I'm really excited about holidays, and I just really need a break, but it's still a while away. I mean, the next break that we're going on, yeah, is in the summer. So we're still gonna have to just power through until then. I wanted to talk a little bit about books just because I wanted to review a couple books that I read recently. So it's gonna be kind of a, like a mini lit chat. So one of them is called Snow Flower and the Secret Fan and I finished this. And this was recommended to me by um, one of my subscribers. Thanks so much for your recommendation. This is basically a book that talks about the friendship of two women in sort of not feudal but or I, th I think that time is called feudalism. It's in China, it takes place in China um, in the 1800s, so I guess that's not feudal times anymore, but um, from like 1823, the book is supposed to take place like in the 18, early 1800s, and it's basically about the friendship of these two sort of um, upper class, well, not, not both of them are upper class, but one of them sort of like you know, middle upper class um, woman and then another another woman and kind of their friendship throughout their life and it kind of talks mostly about just how women lived back then in China and this was the time of foot binding when that was like really popular in China. Nobody would marry a woman if she didn't have her feet bound and um, it's like a, if you don't know about foot binding it's like a horrible horrible process that was practiced on Chinese women for a long time and I think it stopped sometime during the rise of communism but this book talks about foot binding because both of the main characters do have their feet bound and the, there's a chapter that just describes how it was done and like it's just ugh, that part was a little bit hard to read it's kind of disgusting it's really interesting it kind of sounds boring but it isn't it's just a really good story kind of to do with history like it's historical fiction but um a lot to do with the like the role of women in China back then and yeah I really liked it it's um I could totally recommend this book if you like those kind of stories it kind of reminds me of something like the Joy Luck Club if you like that by Amy Tan or um, Memoirs of a Geisha by I think Arthur Golden which I've also read that book and the next book that I finished which I don't have to like show you here because I actually ended up giving it to my mom um, when she left and that's um, Water for Elephants, and I absolutely loved that book. Oh my god, it's like one of the best books I've read in a while, and it's by an author called Sarah Gruen. So the story starts in like present day, and this old man just starts, who's living, he's like living in a nursing home, and basically the story is about his recollections as a young man, like in his early 20s. Um, he joins up with one of these like traveling circuses in America and traveling circuses were really popular during that time this is this takes place like during the prohibition years in the 1920s um, kind of like during I think the prohibition also coincided with like the Great Depression in America and he ends up joining this group of traveling circus like this travel cir circus and he travels throughout the country um, because he works for them as a veterinarian for all the animals and stuff and he kind of falls in love with one of the um, performers in the circus and her name is I think Marlena but the catch is that she's already married she's married to like one of the I think she's married to like the ringman or whatever it's called and so it's kind of a it's kind of a love story but it's not only a love story it just talks a lot about his life in the circus I mean it's fiction but um, it's just a really cool story I think it's just really vibrant it's really a colorful story and it really gives you a look into how like the traveling circuses um, operated back then and I think the author Sarah Gurren she did quite a lot of research before writing this book so I think a lot of the stuff that she writes is like very accurate um, and it actually ended up being one of the New York Times like bestseller like number one bestseller for a while and that's how I found it so really really can recommend that the movie is coming out in April and I didn't even know that there was a movie made about it um, 
I bought the book and then I just was Googling or something and then I found out that, that the movie has already been made and stuff. It's coming out, I think, in April, so I can't wait to see it. And yeah, it's with Reese Witherspoon, um, Robert Pattinson. Okay, so the book that I'm reading right now is City of Thieves by David Benioff. So I just started this like a couple days ago. I'm, on, I'm only on chapter two, um, but so far it's good. I mean, I've only read one chapter, so I can't really say. It's kind of a historical fiction as well. It is about the story of like a young boy who lives in Russia during World War II and there was like the Battle of Leningrad, which is one of the main like huge battles, deciding battles in World War II. And he's in Russia during that time and it has like something to do with that. I haven't even really, like I don't really know the whole story yet. So I ordered two more books from Amazon. I order most of my, most of my books from Amazon because I just find it like so inexpensive and it gets here like really fast. So I got this one. You can see it, A Clockwork Angel by Chris Cassandra Clare. And some of you might be familiar with her because she wrote um, the Mortal Instruments series. This is actually young adult fiction. Um, but I like to read these kind of books once in a while just for fun. And this one is actually the prequel to the Mortal Instruments series. She wrote the Mortal Instruments series. Um, I don't know, I haven't read those either. But she wrote those and then she wrote this kind of like as a prequel. Um, and I started actually listening to this as an audiobook, but I just couldn't get into the audiobook version somehow. I just, I didn't like the narrator and I thought I might actually enjoy it though if I read it. So recently I haven't been doing audiobooks anymore. Um, I've actually been reading books again. So yeah, this is the one I picked up and it's the story of basically, um, a 16 year old girl named Tessa Gray and she arrives in London to like look for her brother. This is, takes place in like the 1800s or something. Um, or it says here during the reign of Queen Victoria. So I don't know exactly when that is. Um, and then she like, I don't know, there's something to do with like the down world where there's like vampires, warlocks, other supernatural folk, blah, blah, blah. And then I also picked up this one. This was again, I think a New York Times bestseller. This is called Cutting for Stone, Cutting for Stone by Abraham Varghese. So I don't know, the plot sounded kind of strange, um, but it had so many good reviews and it was like on the New York Times bestseller list and so I said, what the heck, I'll just pick it up. I think this is kind of one of those books that's going to take me a while to read just because it's kind of, it's kind of thick. Yeah, it's like over 500 pages and the font is really small. Um, so what I noticed, oh, the font, look at the font comparison. This is how you can tell this is an adult book and this is a teen book. <laughs> I feel like there's such a huge difference with that. I don't know why teen books always have these like huge fonts. It feels like I'm reading like a textbook or something in school because this font is like insanely huge. I don't know why that is. I guess they think that teens like have bad eyesight or something. <laughs> I will get back to you, I think, with a proper review of these like three books once I've finished them. I think it might take me a while <laughs> just because I've been so busy lately. I haven't had as much time to read, but I don't know. I'm just really enjoying reading books again. I don't know. I was really into audiobooks for a while, but some of them I just couldn't focus on. Like some of the sort of more complicated books or sort of more, you know, deep books are kind of hard sometimes to listen to on audiobooks. I think you miss a lot. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you guys have a great week or whatever and I'll see you soon. Bye!